some important points about Akhira. Because it is very essential to remain and remember about Akhira as much as possible. Because when we remember about Akhira, when we imagine about Akhira, then we would become more attached to Akhira and we will become more detached to dunya. Can improve our iman? That is how we see Sahabh Radhidhan. They improved their iman. They were very successful in this dunya and akhira, alhamdulillah. Because their iman developed based on akhira. One of the important things um, Aisha Radhidhan narrates, Aisha Radhidhan narrates in Hadith, narrated with Trimidhi, إِنَّ وَنَزَلَ أَوْلُ مَا نَزَلَ مِنْ مِنَ أَيُّ قُرْآنَ سُورَ مِنَ الْمُفَصَّلْ فِيهَا ذِكْرُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ Aisha Radhidhan says, in the beginning only the, what Allah SWT has revealed from Quran, it was about Jannah, about Paradise and Nara, about Hellfire. حَتَّى إِذَا ثَابَ ثَابَ النَّاسُ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامِ نزل الحلال والحرام ولو نزل أول شيء لا تشرب الخمر لقالوا لا ندى الخمر أبدا ولو نزل لا تقرب الزنا لقالوا لا تدع لا ندى الزنا أبدا. If it was revealed in the first in the beginning, don't consume alcohol, don't drink alcohol. People would have said you would never live drinking alcohol. If it was revealed in the beginning, don't commit zina, don't commit adultery or fornication, people would have answered, we would never live committing fornication or adultery. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning, what he revealed, it was about Jannah and remaining about Akhira, about Nar, Hellfire. Hatta idha thaba thaba nasir al-Islam. Hatta idha thaba kulubiha. In another narration, it says, until People's hearts were attached to Akhira, attached to Akhira, Jannah, and about the realization of Akhira, Nar. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started revealing about Al-Halal, Al-Haram, and Sharia. When we see in the beginning, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in Makkah period, 13 years, we never see about Sharia. Most of these things about, you see, in uh, so, uh, Amma, many of the surah, Reminding about Akhira, about Nar, about uh, Jannah, about uh, Hellfire, about Qiyamah, this is also always revealed. And most of the Sharia revealed in Marina. So this is very, very important. We also remember about Akhira as much as possible with our children, with our family. We imagine, try to imagine about Akhira. Sahabar Dhidan, when they pray, used to remain, remain remember about Akhira. You bring the imagination of Akhira. As some Sahaba when they recite, as Rasulullah used to recite the Surah, whenever he used to recite, if the ayah about Nar he recited, he would ask Allah SWT to protect him. All Sahaba they repeated the same thing. Whenever the ayah about the Jannah was recited, Rasulullah Sallallahu would ask Dua, oh Allah, make us among those who are people of paradise. All Sahab they used to say, say this. They had the imagination. Because of this imagination, you see, as they were seeing Akhira directly, they became, now we are so much attached to dunya. We, we rarely remember about Akhira. But Sahab their imagination every day, every moment was about Akhira. They worked for Akhira. That is why they sacrificed everything for Akhira. For example, when, when, how we should bring, how we should bring up our children, we have to learn from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, Fatima Radhi Anha, the daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once she was shining a coin, coin. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, Ya Fatima, O Fatima, why are you shining this coin? Fatima said, Ya Rasulullah, you said us, when you give sadaqah to any poor man, the coin 
or any wealth you are giving sadaka before it is falling on the hands of a poor man it falls in on the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i am shining because this coin is going to fall in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why i am shining it you see how much they their mindset is set on akhirah completely that is why we have to remember our children about akhirah much as much as possible let us uh, inshallah i hope in a week or another week we will start complete series from the death until a believer goes into janna and what about janna from quran and hadith and from the death until the day of judgment and uh, people of hell fire kuffar and munafiqin how they enter in the hell fire what is the hell fire so we will talk both inshallah as a series few weeks we will talk inshallah today just a small remainder about akhira but after one or two weeks we will start about series about remaining about akhira completely inshallah we will let all today we talk about some brief remainder about akhira see subhanallah alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us we are very few in this musalla right alhamdulillah we have to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call adam alayhi salam our father alayhi adam alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell adam alayhi salam ya adam akhraj ba'than nar o adam send out portion of your children to hellfire adam alayhi salam will ask ya rab wa ma ba'than nar oh my lord ya allah oh allah what is the portion of my children to the hellfire allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply 999 people out of 1000 see subhanallah 999 person out of 1000 people only one will go to paradise from the children of adam and 999 will go to hellfire subhanallah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we have to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are in in the halaqa of paradise to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remain about akhira and we are making zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah we have to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tens and tens of people outside they are going to help here they are in the bars they are in the clubs they are enjoying with their girlfriends and boyfriends and they are entering into help here without any knowledge people in everywhere they are naked and uh, just wandering around they are entering into hell fire in tents alhamdulillah we are very few may allah make us among the people of paradise allah may not ask us and the jarana in ali janna ya rabbal alamin this is how very few people will enter into jannah most of the people are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says la amna an jahannam min al-jinna wal nasi wal nasi ajma'in we will fill the hell fire with the people from the children of adam and the jinns they will be filled in the hellfire very few people will enter into paradise so we when we talk about hellfire and paradise some people are wondering how come in uh, some people are reasoning many people kuffar or munafiqin or who were sinning in this world how come he will spend uh eternally in hell fire for example some people live in this world for 80 years 100 years maybe 70 years few years they commit sin but they end up in the hell fire for forever how come is it not unjust and why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hell fire and jannah the reasons we have to learn first the reasons you see first of all in this world people committing lot of sins like crimes for their own enjoyment for example some of them killing by hundreds and thousands some of them killing people in millions you know in the world war what happened second world war hit because of hitler how many millions of people are ki- were killed and recently we see George Bush, how many thousands of people he killed in Iraq and other wars, Afghanistan and other wars. 
and Netanyahu and uh, uh, many other tyrants, they kill in thousands. Most of the time, these criminals, they become prime ministers and presidents and they never face any punishment in this dunya. Like uh, uh, these people, George Bush, he killed in thousands, maybe hundreds of uh, thousands uh, he killed, yet he never faced any judgment. And when the Israel was created, when the first prime minister, his name is Begin, Mr. Begin, he killed people in thousands. And then he became prime minister. Because of killing, he became prime minister. Sharon, you know that. He killed children. Shabra Shatila is famous. Masak. He massacred hundreds and thousands of people in uh, Lebanon and Palestine. Then he became prime minister. When he was defense, uh, you know, he was a general. He killed thousands. Then he was promoted as a prime minister. He never faced any justice in this world. Many people, even some people, kill only once. Sometimes even they are punished, they will be punished only once. Some people kill in hundreds, sometimes they will face, if, even if they face punishment, only once they will face. They will be killed only once. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the names is Al-Adil. He is justice. Justice, he is just. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give the proper punishment to his slaves, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this name attribute is, you will be invalid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hellfire to punish them and give them proper punishment. On the day of judgment, there will not be any escape. For such criminals, even though they are promoted, they are now in India, many such killers, they become ministers. But on the day of judgment, nobody will escape. This world, they can escape. They can have smallest punishment, meanest punishment. Some people have meanest punishment. But Akhira, it is reserved for them. They will have the proper and justice, the justice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created hellfire. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created paradise to reward his beloved slaves. Slaves who suffer for the sake of him. Many of the slaves, we, we, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about Khabba bin Arad Radhidhan, Bilal Radhidhan, Sumaya Radhidhan, Ammar bin Yasir. We talked about some Sahaba Radhidhan, how they endured tortures because of the sake of Allah SWT. In the end, some of them tortured and they were killed in this dunya. For example, Sumaya Radhidhan, she was killed by Abu Jahl when he threw arrow on her uh, uh, private part and she was killed immediately. And she didn't get any reward in this dunya. Why she sacrificed herself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reserved their reward whom I was sacrificing for him for the akhirah. Even though they will not receive the proper reward, maybe uh, uh, not at all. Sometimes even they will uh, uh, die for the sake of him without any, uh, getting any uh, victory in this world. But in the Akhirah, Allah SWT reserved for them the greatest reward that is paradise. Because Allah SWT is Radil, Allah SWT will never be unjust to his slaves. So Allah SWT reserved for their reward in the Akhirah. About the age, how come some people end up in healthcare forever, even though they lived in this dunya a few years, they should have the same level of years punishment. It is because Allah's wisdom is from the highest level. His wisdom is the highest level of wisdom. No one can imagine about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this kafir, this munafiqah, this criminal, if he was given one year more in his life, still he will commit the same crime. Still, he will commit the same kufr. If George Bush, he was returned to the president, would you <laughs> think that he will be uh, silent? He will kill more people. This Obama now is killing everywhere. Right? If George Bush returns, Netanyahu, he was prime minister long ago. Then he came back, he killed a lot before then uh, now. He killed now a lot uh, uh, more than before. Right? So if the return, 
they have the intention to commit the crime again and again. If they were given life of thousand years, still they will be committing the same crime, they have the same intention. Even if they were given life forever, they will commit the same crime. Their intention is, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wisdom, the highest wisdom, the level of wisdom is highest level, no one can imagine, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows every slave what he will do. That is why his punishment will be forever, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows them, even though they, they come again, they will commit the same crime. So, they will have the same punish, punishment forever, they will live in the hellfire. As for the people, some people, uh, as we mentioned in the previous weeks, someone who will uh, do uh, deeds of people of paradise until between him and uh, paradise, there are distance of a few distance, like a feet of distance between him and uh, uh, the paradise, a yard distance. Then he will commit a sin, he will commit a deed, deed of people of hellfire and he will end up in hellfire, right? And the opposite side can happen. Someone would commit uh, uh, deeds of uh, people of hellfire until between him and hellfire uh, a yard of distance. Then he will commit a deed of the de deed of uh, people of paradise and then he will enter paradise. Okay. This is the same thing. He would under, end up in hellfire because Allah subhanahu wa knows his intention. Allah subhanahu wa knows he will even if he was given life more than what he had, he would commit the same sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put him in the hellfire. The examples we will see, SubhanAllah, dear brothers, we have to be very, very careful. Every moment, with our intention, with regards to our intentions, with regards to our deeds, we have to be very, very careful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not see our facial, or our clothes, our, uh, our face, our, our, our clothes. No. Allah SWT will see, only He sees our qalb, heart, intention, and Allah SWT sees our deeds. Both should go together. If one is failed, the other one will fail. For example, <coughs> someone says, I have very good intention, Allah. Because of good intention only I did this. I never had any bad intention, just I want to check this or I want to do this. With good intention only I did this wrong. Then it is not the correct answer. The deed is wasted. Because if the deed is not confirming with the Sharia, Hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi the guidance according it is not according to the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi If it is not according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa taala, this deed is wasted, and it is written on as a sin. It will be written on as sin. You see, every time you see, make sin, heart will become more and more dark and dark. You would become more far away, far away from Allah subhanahu wa taala. The same thing may happen. Some, some people, they do not have intention. They don't have pure intention. It is for the sake of Allah SWT. Yet, they are doing good deed. Their deeds are wasted. Their deeds are wasted. Sometimes, they have evil intention, but they are showing up with good deeds. Their deeds are wasted. As Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Al-Kahf, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ آمَالَ Shall we inform you of people whose deeds are wasted in this world? أَلَّا دِنَا ضَلَّ سَعِيمٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Their deeds are wasted in this dunya. أَلَّا دِنَا ضَلَّ سَعِيمٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَحْسِنُونَ سُنْعَا Allah SWT says they used to think they were doing good. You see, in their intention, they are doing good. Ah, uh, this is I am doing good. I am doing for Islam. I am doing for the Maslaha. They used to think that they are doing good. But ulaika alladina kafru bi ayatil bimuli qaa'i habitat amalun fala nuki munam yom al kiyamat wazna. Allah says they are the ones rejected. 
in the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Quran and the revelation of Quran and the science of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the one who rejected. They rejected the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rejected the ayat, they rejected the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So their amal, all their deeds are wasted. Habit. It is wasted. On the day of judgment, we will never assign any weight to, we will never assign any value to their deeds. So, intention and deeds must be going together. If one is fine, the other one will fail. Intention must be purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the deed must be confirmed by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. If anything is not confirmed, it is wasted. So every, every moment, every action, what we do, we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether this is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. We have to make confirmation. See, just some stories, because we, we are talking about Akhirah, how people end up in hellfire, even though they were doing lot, lot good things. For example, very simple example, Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, most of his life he used to protect Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He used to serve Islam by protecting Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in the end, he ended up in hellfire. He didn't become a Muslim because of small arrogance. When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was teaching, telling him to say La ilaha illallah. Yami, oh my uncle, oh my dear uncle, just to say la ilaha illallah, I will take responsibility. On the day of judgment, at least I, I will have something to intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just to say la ilaha illallah. Same time, Abu Jahl was saying, uh, Oh Abu Talib, are you going to leave the religion of your forefathers? You see, just he was giving him some arrogance just for your uh, nephew, you are going to say la ilaha illallah, are you, are, are you leaving your, uh, the religion of your forefathers? Then because of this small arrogance, he died as a, in Kufr. He ended up in hellfire, right? Even though he was protecting the Sulaiman Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, highest mission, he was doing with the highest mission, uh, helping the highest mission of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On the other hand, Abu Sufyan, he fought Islam and Rasulullah Sallallahu for most of his life. But towards the end of life, very few years before his death, he became Muslim. And he fought for, the, uh, for Islam. He used to fight. It was said, even he uh, fought in the uh, Battle of Yermuk, I think. He was fighting, while he was fighting, he used to say, we used to fight Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us fight for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and serve Islam and get martyrdom. This is the chance we can amend our life. We can amend whatever we committed sins in the in the past. Subhanallah, he ended up as a people of paradise. He died in Islam, right? So many <laughs> examples. One of the examples I would like to give, you see, this is not a normal person. During the uh, Madinan period, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to sit with many Sahaba Radhi in the Masjid. Group of Sahaba Radhi he would give speech, he would give Mahadara and he would answer the questions. Once Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was speaking among the group of Sahaba Radhi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Among you, a person, there is a person, he is among the people of hellfire. And his molar, molar tooth is the size of Mount Wahad. You see, on the day of judgment, in the people of paradise, as for the people of paradise, Allah Subhanahu Wa we know in the hadith, they are the size of Adam and Islam, 90 foot, uh, 60 yard, okay? 
big size. Subhanallah. They will have, they will have, the people of paradise, everyone will have the power of 100 men. Why Allah subhanahu is giving such size and uh, power to enjoy more and more? For example, you see in this dunya, if you hit a, an elephant or a cow, okay, with a strong, uh, your punch, just you punch, it will not uh, hurt that much. Maybe cow, it may, it may hurt some. But elephant, it will, it will not hurt, right? But with the same level of punch, if you punch a cat, it will be more hurtful. If you punch, same level of punching, if you punch a ant, it will die immediately, right? So, the enjoyment or punishment depends on the size, right? Because elephant is very big. It can withhold even your strong punch. It will not hurt. Maybe like just you are slapping, just maybe you are just giving a touch. touch. As for the ant, immediately it will pass away. As for the cat, it will be hurtful, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give more power and more as in, in size the people of paradise so they may enjoy more and more. On the other hand, people of hellfire, they would be in huge size. Like we see in this dunya, some people, 500 pounds, 600 pounds people, some men in the US I saw, his skin falling everywhere. Right? Have you seen these photos on the newspapers, on the internet? His belly is falling below his bed. Right? Huge in size. Meat everywhere, meat. He cannot walk. Just he's on the bed. He cannot move anywhere. Right? This is how people of hellfire, they would have huge size. Their molar tooth, molar will be the size of moon to had. Moon to had. It would be annoying them if they just uh, move their face, it will be touching their shoulders. There is a hadith, it says very clearly, his tooth will touch his shoulder. It will be annoying, he cannot move. Just if he, just if he sees, it will touch his shoulder and it will, it will be annoying him, it will cause pain. Pain more than pain from the hellfire. Uh, so, Rasulullah says, so uh, why Allah SWT created th these people of hellfire in huge in size, so they may test the punishment. The other hand, people of uh, paradise, they are in huge size and they are very powerful to enjoy and more and more. People of hellfire are huge in size, but very ugly. And they cannot move, they can test more and more punishment. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. So Rasulullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, among the group of people, Sahaba Radilan, he said, Among you, a man is from the hellfire. His smaller is in size of Mount Wahad. Wahad is how much big you know that whoever has gone to Medina. So how huge he will be? How great punishment he would be testing in the hellfire. When Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Sahaba Radhidhan, they were shocked. They were terrified. Everyone seeing others' face. Who is among us? Then Abu Hurairah Radhidhan says, he narrates this hadith. Abu Hurairah Radhidhan lived for a long time. And he, used to, he was fearing, he was afraid of this hadith. Every one of them afraid, maybe I made the one, I made the one. Then Abu Hurairah he says, he saw every Sahabi among this group of people uh, dying as a martyr. Some of them died as a martyr. Alhamdulillah, he know these are not among the people of Hellfire. Until there, is, there was only two among this group who were living. Every one of them passed away. As martyr, as in Islam, in a blessed way they, they have passed away, except two people, 
one is Abhura Radhiran, the other man is Arrajjal. You see this Arrajjal, he used to sit with Sahaba Radhiran. He used to memorize lot of Quran, lot of Surah. He used to memorize, he memorized already lot of Surah. Abhura Radhiran says, after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, Afat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this man, Ar-Rajjal, came to Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhidhan. He said, allow me to go to Imama. Imama means near Riyadh and this area to propagate Islam. Let me go and make dawah to people of Bani Hanifa. Even the people of Bani Hanifa, Al-Yamama, there was a man called Musaylama Al-Kardab. Musaylama Dalaya. He used to tell people and he was a false prophet. He used to say, I am the uh, prophet. Then there was huge followers among his tribe. Banu Hanifa, the tribe, they have a strong tribalism in their heart. So they used to follow him out of tribal love. Okay, they used to follow uh, Musaylam al -Kardam. This man, Ar Rajal, he said, let me go to these people and convey about Islam. Let him go there. When Ar Rajal went to Yamama, to Bani Hanifa, he saw huge followers following Musaylam al -Kardal. When he saw huge followers are following Musaylam al -Kardal, immediately the lust of this world, desires of this world come into his heart. Then he said, let me support him and get this enjoyment, the enjoyment of this world. He started supporting Musaylam al -Kardab. Musaylam al -Kardab, this Rajal, he became right hand of Musaylam al -Kardab because he already became very familiar with Islam. He memorized a lot of Quran. Okay? So Musaylam al Kardab used to him because he is familiarity with Islam and Muslims. So Musaylam al Kardab used to him and he became the right hand of Musaylam al Kardab. Then he fought on behalf of Musaylam al Kardab. When Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhiran was Khalifa, Abu Bakr Siddiq Radhiran sent an army to fight with Musaylam al Kardab and his people. And it was said, 10,000 soldiers were fighting alongside Musaylam al -Kardab. How many followers he had? And huge, many, many Sahabar Dilan, they were martyred on the day of the uh, battle against Musaylam al -Kardab. Battle of Yamama, many Sahabar Dilan, many Qurra, Hufad al Quran, they were martyred on this battle. Until Zayd bin al Khattab, the brother of Umar bin Khattab Radhilan, he killed a Rajal. You see, he became, he became Munafiq, he became Murtad, and he apostated, he fought against Islam and Muslims, and he entered into Hellfire. That is why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he is among the big people of Hellfire, he smaller is in size of Mount Ohad. How great punishment he will have. Just imagine, uh, dear brothers, we might say, Alhamdulillah, I am praying today, I am uh, fasting and I am reciting Quran, I memorize Quran. But nobody knows the end. How can we make our end blessed? How can we secure our end as a blessed end? The only way is fear Allah all the moment. Fear Allah and be conscious of all our deeds. There is no reason. We cannot say, I am doing this bad thing because of this reason. No. No one can say. I met a brother, he is, he is working in a restaurant. He every day touching pork. Right? He is cleaning and he is working for uh, also alcohol. He is pouring the alcohol. I said many ahadith. Many, many times I reminded him. He said, tomorrow, uh, uh, after uh, three months, I am leaving. Now, he, uh, he is saying this with me for more than two years. And he is saying with other people five years uh, before that. 
He never left this job. Many people, you see, this Arrajal, only one spark. Then he entered into Kufru. So we should never allow Shaitan into our heart. For example, Umar bin Khattab, once he was in, uh, when he was a Khalifa, he was a Khalifa, he climbed suddenly on the member and then he talked in front of people. I was a shepherd of camels. I used to, I used to shepherd camel, flock of camels for uh, my relatives and my people. They used to give me handful of dates after shepherding for a day. He used to talk about his uh, smallness when he was a shepherd. Abdurrahman bin Awf Radhidhan, he said, Ya Umar, Ya Amir al-Mumini, Khalifa, why you are making yourself small in front of people? He said, Oh to you, Ya Abu Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman bin Awf. He said, Oh to you. Shaitan came to me and said to me, Ya Umar, between you and Allah, nobody is there. He became so high. This small spark in his heart, Small crack he did not allow. Immediately he went, he climbed on the member, he just uh, shattered whatever uh, Shaitan has built. Shaitan wants to make him arrogant, make him something, imagine powerful and so, so many. So he immediately shattered that idea. He made him, he wants to make him small in front of people. Just he claimed, he said, and then he came back. He did not allow even a crack, small crack. Now we are opening the gates, flood gates to Shaitan. We are opening and uh, inviting Shaitan like flood gate. So we should never allow, we should be conscious all time how much we are heading for Akhira, how much we are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every action, there is no reason. Nobody can say reason, this is, I am doing this wrong because of this reason. There is no reason to do any wrong. There is no do, reason to do any sin. Because this sin may enter into hellfire. You see this Ar-Rajjal, only one small spark, then he entered into Kufur and he entered into hellfire. Munafik and Murtad, everything. He sat, he sat, used to sit with Sahaba Radhidhan, he memorized the Quran. What all this? Everything gone wrong. Nothing, SubhanAllah. Everything wasted. Another story, as the Habi mentions. This was uh, during the time of uh, people, uh, um, uh, during the time of uh, Tabi. As the Habi mentions, there was jihadis going on in Syria. Many Mujahideen, they went to Syria. Damascus was surrounded, seized by Muslim army. While it was uh, seized, they laid siege. Uh, uh, Muslims laid siege on Damascus. And Damascus was under the Roman Empire. Among the Mujahideen, you see, this is Mujahideen, jihad, he's doing jihad. He saw a woman from a building and he started corresponding with her. He, wa he said, I want, how can I come? She said, it is very easy. You become Christian, I will open a door and you can come and... Then he became Christian. He memorized the Quran, he memorized the full Quran. He became Christian and he entered and he married with her and after this event Muslims already victorious over the Damascus, over Damascus and over Syria, all over Syria uh, after a long time you see Mujahideen they would stay for a period they would train the locals then they would move on to other areas to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is how they are not after seeking the lands to uh, occupy the lands, no. They, after conveying the message, they would train the locals, they would hand out the power, then they will go to other lands to convey the message of Islam. After, uh, probably after years, Mujahideen were moving out of Syria. 
One man came to this man who already converted Christianity and he already have children out of this woman. Now they are talking with him. Let us go with Mujahideen. He said, how can I come? I am already married and I have children. I, I am not going, coming with you. You can go. These people asked, how come you become murtad? You, what, uh, what about you memorize the Quran, lot of Quran and other things, hadith? hadith. You, know, uh, you have a lot of knowledge. What about Quran? He asked this man, are you asking about Quran? I forgot all. Except only one verse. He said, only one verse I can remember. What is that verse? He said, Rubama yavaddu alladhi nakafaru lau kanu muslimin Zarhum yaakulu yatamattau ilhimul amal fasau fayalamun This is the only verse he could remember. What is this verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rubama yavaddu alladhi nakafaru lau kanu muslimin On the day of judgment, the kuffar, the unbelievers, the munafiqin, they would wish, they would wish they are among the muslimin. Lau kanu muslimin so let them leave them alone to eat and enjoy and have false hope in this world. Let them eat and enjoy and have amusement of false hope in this world. On the day they will know. On the day of judgment they will know. Only this verse he remembers. Subhanallah. He forgot all Quran. He remembers this is only one, only ayah. He became munafiq and murtad and ended up in hellfire. So we would never have such hope. We are praying, we are uh, memorizing, memorizing uh, some surahs and we have knowledge. So we would end up in uh, uh, paradise. No, we, would, sh we should be conscious in all the moment, all our actions, all our intentions, whether we are doing according to Quran and Sunnah or not. This is very, very important. So, this is the, uh, uh, some reasons I have already told uh, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created hellfire and Jannah, I have already told. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing people of hellfire forever. Some people will be punished forever. Some people, uh, yeah, eventually they will get out because of the least of Iman. But even though the punishment is so much, huge, millions of years, or billions of years probably, he would spend in hellfire. So uh, now we, we will talk about some uh, important points of Jannah and Nar. See, SubhanAllah, Jannah is huge. We can never imagine. We can never grasp with our the small brain. Musa alayhi salatu salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, let me know the lowest level of Jannah. This is the lowest level of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, a man who is the last person to come out of hellfire. As I said, some people, because of the least iman, they would come out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After punishing them for longer period, he would get them out of hellfire. This is the man who had the least of iman. He is the last person coming out of hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get him out of hellfire. The hadith is long. We, we have many, many things. So we will go into just narrow the point only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him Jannah equal to 10 times of this world. You see, imagine, imagine if you, uh, for example, how many years uh, you are uh, living in Japan, just making income, uh, so, some people, they could barely buy some property in this, uh, in this country. Very, maybe a plot or apartment, maybe small building, small piece of land. And some of us, they have bought some piece of land in our country, home countries, okay? 
But what about Akhira? Is there someone who wants one uh, country? Nobody wants. Even kings, they, they don't want own country. For example, the emperor of Japan, how much he wants his land? Small piece of land. The, when you see the uh, imperial palace, small piece of land here and there. Right? Emperor. So nobody wants. Is there, can you imagine, can anyone can own all Japan? Oh, no one can. Can anyone can uh, uh, own the continent, Asia, all Asia? No one can. No one can own. No one have ever owned a country like this or a continent. No one ever owned. It is impossible in this dunya. But Akhira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as in the hadith, this hadith, he told Musa alayhi salam, the last person to leave from hellfire and he will enter in Jannah, he would have equal to the Jannah, the, the size of Jannah will be equal to this world, ten times equal to this world. Ten times. Inshallah, when we talk about Akhira, the series of Akhira, we will talk, talk deeply about this hadith and we will explain about what happened with this man. We will talk about it deeply. So, the last person, the, this is the lowest level of Jannah, ten times of this world. This is the size, the quality, uh, it is the quantity we are talking about, ten times of this world. And it is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create billions of planets, they are billions of solar system like this, just uh, if Allah wishes anything, if Allah wills to create anything, only he says, be and it is. Be and it is. Kun fayakun. There is no any effort needed from Allah subhanahu wa He does not need any resource. So it is possible for Allah subhanahu wa Give ten times of this world. What about the quality? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in hadith, a place in Jannah equal to the equal to a whip, you know whip, small stick, one feet long stick, maybe two inch or one, one and a half inch uh, in width, or one inch in width, some whips and one feet, this is the whip. The size of the whip, the equal to the size of whip in the paradise, the place of paradise, is better than this world and whatever in it. A place equal to a whip in the paradise better than this world and whatever in it. That is the quality. The lowest level of the Jannah, the quality. What about the highest? Musa Alayhi Salaam did not leave Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When he asked about the highest, uh, the lowest level of Jannah, Musa Alayhi Salaam asked about the highest level of Jannah. What about the higher levels? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answered, Ulaikal ladheena arattu Ulaikal ladheena arattu Barastahum karamati bide. For them, I have planted their honors from uh, by my own hand. Ulaikaladin Aratum Arastahum Karasta Karamatam Bede. Ulaikaladin Aratu Karasta Karamatam Bede. For them, I have planted their honors by my own hand. Just exam, uh, just imagine your imagine. Just I, I want to bring to your imagination. If you bring the top class engineers in this world, all the engineers, top class engineers, and give them plan to build a palace and gardens. Let them make a plan. Let them. You give the all resource. Give them all resource of this world gold and silver and whatever you have and labor force all labor force then tell this top class engineers give them best salary and make among these top class uh, engineers the top most as supervisors of this project and they together build 
palace and gardens, how much beautiful it will be. But it is nothing compared to Allah Subhanahu because Allah Subhanahu is the creator of all the universe, creator of the engineers, creator of the everything. If Allah Subhanahu Taala makes Jannah by His own hand, I have planted their honor by my own hand. Then how great Jannah will be? How great? Nothing compared to this engineer. You see, when we compare to Jannah and Dunya, nothing. Subhanallah. And for this Dunya, we are sacrificing all our life. Just make a comparison sheet, left and right, dunya and akhira. Jannah, right, here, left, two comparison sheet, dunya. Quantity, jannah, how many years, age, anybody knows? No limit. No, no age. Million, billion of years, nothing, infinity. Eternal life. Never will end. How many years maximum in this dunya? Just uh, imagine somebody is living in the, the, the oldest person in this dunya now living uh, someone in the US. 121 years old. And uh, he died uh, few months ago. 120. Okay. Just uh, divide into infinity with the 120. Zero. For zero, we are sacrificing all our life. How huge land, the paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Compete each other towards paradise. That is the width of the paradise is width of the heavens and the earth. Where is the heavens? For one person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the paradise, width of it is width of heavens and earth. Where is the heaven? Can anybody, anybody know the heavens? Just uh, imagine, uh, uh, let us uh, uh, get the example of the size of the heavens. Rasulullah says in one hadith, the lowest heaven, Samayil Ula, compared to Sama Ithania, the second heaven, is compared to a ring in a desert. If you throw a, this ring in a desert, huge desert, okay, how this ring will look in the desert? That is how the lowest heaven will look compared to the second heaven. Second heaven compared to the third heaven, like a ring in a desert. And third heaven compared to the fourth, like a ring in a desert. Fourth compared to fifth, fifth compared to sixth. Sixth heaven compared to seventh, like a ring in a desert. Where are we living? We are living not even in the uh, first heaven. We are below the lowest heaven. Because Allah SWT says, وَزَيِّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَحِفْلَ We have adorned the lowest heaven with the lambs. And protection, Allah SWT says about the planets and this nebula and whatever you see, uh, galaxies, nebulas, Milky Way, all the solar system, whatever all we, we, are find, uh, we are having this knowledge about this, this is below the first heaven. If it is below the first heaven, you know, there are some planets, there are some stars. Uh, to reach, it needs billions of light years. Billions of light years to reach to the star. Okay, light comes from the star in billion years. So, how huge this lowest heaven, the, it is below lowest heaven, not even heaven. So how huge will be the first heaven, the second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, and seventh heaven? There is no such size. Size, time, place, all this is created for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, created for us these limits so that we can move on with our life.
Akhira, everything is unlimited. Allah SWT says, وَسَارِعُ إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّةٍ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The heavens, the, the Jannah is, the width of is, heaven and earth. Where is the heaven? We don't know. That is how huge Jannah for a person. For the Jannah, how much we are sacrificing our time and our money and our wealth and our, our uh, uh, soul. How much we are sacrificing? Think. See, on the Day of Judgment, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in one hadith, one man, when he sees hellfire and paradise, he would wish, he would wish, from the day he was born in this dunya, until the day he died, for example, 100 years, 120 years, or 60 years, 70 years, whatever he lived in this dunya, from the day he is born, until the day he is died, if he was bound with a rope and people are dragging him on his face, imagine a child is born and someone put a rope on the head and he is dragging on the streets and pavement on his face. Child face is dragging on the street for 70 years, 100 years. And this is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would say, this, he, this is not enough to save him from the hellfire and to enter him into the paradise. Now how much we are sacrificing in this dunya? For Jannah. How much we are sacrificing our time and our money and our uh, sources, resources, to save us from hellfire? We have to imagine. We have to, we have to imagine about this and we have to be aware of this. Some of the, uh, uh, what time Isha? 7.30. 7.30, okay. Now within 10, uh, 10, 15 minutes, inshallah, you will finish. Just I read, uh, beautiful, uh, because Ibn al-Qaim rahimullah says, Ibn al-Qaim rahimullah, he took from hadith, hadith. He just summarized about Jannah, about Jannah. Some of the beautiful verse he made, فَحَيَّا عَلَى الْجَنَّةِ عَدْنٍ This is written by Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله فَإِنْ سَعَلْتَ عَنْ أَرْضِهَا وَتُرْبَتِهَا فَهِيَ الْمِسْكِ وَالزَّعْفْرَانِ If you ask about the earth, the dirt and the uh, earth that is misk, musk pure white musk and zafran safran bain salta an saqfiha fa huwa arsh ar rahman if you ask about the roof of the jannah it is the throne of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throne of ar rahman if your roof is throne of ar rahman how great is jannah see rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says people of paradise they will have a pavilion tent how huge a tent we have here? Maybe 300 meter square, 300 square meter. Okay, you might have seen huge tent. But in Jannah, there is a tent. Tuluha, the, the height of that is 30 miles. How huge? This tent is made of hollow pad. Huge pale, hollow pale, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this tent for people of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They would have palace above their palace, pavilions. You see the pavilions, how huge. How he, you can earn the palaces in paradise? It's very easy. If you build a masjid, even if you contribute to build a masjid, a brick, you would have a palace. If you pray 12 rakah in, uh, in a day, every day if you pray 12 rakah sunnah, what are they? 4 rakah before Dohar, 2 rakah after Dohar, uh, 2 rakah after uh, Maghrib, after Isha and Fajr. If you pray 12 rakah, you would have a palace. 
and Rasulullah says in another hadith, anyone who recites Qul Hu Allah and Surah Ikhlas, ten times he would have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala building a palace. Gharsaniha, the plantation of paradise is plantation. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for everyone, every um, uh, child uh, born in this world, whether kafir or Muslim. <coughs> Everyone, whoever born, every child is given birth from your mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a palace, uh, sorry, creates a, a place in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a pla uh, place in hellfire. Every one of us have a place in paradise. Every one of us have a place in hellfire. Whoever can have that either paradise, he can work for paradise. Rasulullah says in another hadith, uh, there are uh, two ahadith, the plantation of uh, uh, paradise is Subhanallah Radim, Subhanallah Bihamdi. If you say that just Subhanallah Radim, Subhanallah Bihamdi, one tree is grown in your paradise. And another hadith, Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Allah Akbar. If you say Subhanallah Alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Allah, Allah, Allah Akbar, a tree is planted. Allah SWT is planting one tree. You see, it is empty place. It is our, our, we are going to make effort in this dunya, whether you are going, moving, why you keep your uh, uh, tongue empty? Just to say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, ala ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, a tree is planted for you. Just like you see, when you sit in a car, you turn on radio, just turn on radio switch, antenna comes up, right? Just like that, if you say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, plant safety, there is a plant grows on behalf of you. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah Ar-Rahman, Min dunihima jannatan. There will be garden apart from these two gardens. There, they would have two gardens apart from this garden, from apart from uh, this jannah. What is the meaning? The Mufassirin say, as Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala created paradise, place in paradise for everyone, every children of Adam. And Allah Subhanahu created place in hellfire for every children of Adam, right? Now, people have, lot and lot of people enter into hellfire. Their place in Jannah is empty now, right? Now, Allah Subhanahu Wa will give these places of kuffar, Allah SWT created for them a place in paradise. Allah SWT will give this paradise to Mu'min in the believers. The rightful slaves of Allah SWT, the obedient slaves of Allah SWT, Allah will give them the paradise that was created for Allah SWT reserved for the kuffar, but kuffar they entered, munafiqin they entered into hellfire forever. So Allah SWT will give them this Jannah. So Amin Duni Jannatan. Apart from these two gardens, Allah SWT will give. There are a lot and lot. Inshallah, when we come to talk about uh, paradise and hellfire, and we talk about a uh, uh, series, inshallah, soon we will start about our journey towards Akhira, then we will talk very detailed about like making a tour in Jannah, inshallah, we will see the graphical details of the, uh, how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talks in Hadith, and how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed in Quran, inshallah, we will talk in very detail. Uh, even though whatever details were given, it is only just a fraction and even just, you see, human language is how it is developed. When you see, whenever a man sees, he names particular name for that, right? That is how human language develops. For example, uh, 30 years ago, there is no mobile phone. There was no name such as mobile phone, cellular phone, there was nothing, right? People invented, they created this, then they named it, right? When we saw, we named and we have named, we have language about it. So Jannah, never seen by any human being. So there is no way to describe the Jannah. To describe Jannah and describe our hellfire, there is no words in human language because nobody have saw it. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just bringing closer to our eyes the meaning of Jannah and Hellfire by words what we have in this dunya now. For example, the fruits. In Jannah, the resemblance of fruit, we will have resemblance of fruits of this dunya in Jannah. The only resemblance is name only. The size, taste, color, everything is totally different. Rasulullah says in Hadith, fruits like earthen pots. You see, uh, in back home, we have large pots made by uh, sand and made by uh, thin, uh, mud, right? The fruits are like huge fruits. Subhanallah. And uh, the leaves of uh, uh, trees, like the ears of elephants. And they would have the shadow, even a person riding on a fastest horse, he cannot cross this shed. Even uh, if, he, if he is riding on a horse for 100 years, he cannot cross this shed, a shed of a tree. That is how huge a tree will be. There are a lot of a description, inshallah. Just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing closer to our ideas, the imagination, what is Jannah by His Prophet and by Quran, from Quran. Inshallah, we will see in the later uh, in series when we talk about Jannah and Hellfire, about Akhira in detail. However, my request is and my and the remainder, uh, remember, uh, just remainder to myself and all of you, all of our brothers, just to be conscious of our deeds. There is no reason to tell this is I am doing this wrong because of this and this. This is the only reason. And we should be conscious of all our acts and all our intentions. Because anything may mislead us. Anything may cause us into hellfire. May Allah save all of us from hellfire. Amen. May Allah make us among the people of Agul Jannah. Uh, and uh, before question, moving to question and answer session, I would like to give some notes because uh, I mean, in my last dars we talked about social media and haya uh, and hishma. We talked about uh, the shamefulness, bashfulness, shyness. We talked about last dars, right? Some brothers who saw the clip online, they asked the questions: How about we talk about this haya with the non-Muslims or new Muslims? We should not talk. This is given for Muslims. However, when it comes to non-Muslims or new Muslims, we should not immediately jump on to teach them about Haya, about Hishma, all these uh, great qualities. We cannot teach them because they don't have anything. In a country where there is very, very little we see Haya, many men, they like to have hair cutting by women. When women, they like to have hair cutting by men. There is no haya at all. What we are going to talk to non-Muslims and new Muslims, especially new Muslims, they come to Islam, they don't know anything about haya. The only thing we have to teach now to improve their iman. As I said, Aisha Radhiallahu said, if it was revealed to people to leave zina, leave khamr, uh, uh, drinking alcohol, people would have run away from Islam. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed about Jannah and Nar. Until people's hearts were attached to Islam and Akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed about Sharia. So now we have to improve Iman. Once Iman is improved, automatically Haya will come. We have to teach about Haya. But it is not necessary, we should not jump into new Muslims to teach about Haya in the beginning. Uh, there is a uh, good teacher, a good teacher would always teach uh, easiest things first before the difficult ones. So for example, one brother, he attended my Arabic class uh, like uh, to learn the sitting Quran in seven hours. We had rapid course. He attended and then he and his uh, wife Possibly he, she was, we don't know, she was a girlfriend. Both attended our class. After that, Alhamdulillah, they both become Muslim. They embraced Islam. After a few months, I asked him, are you married? 
He said, no, I am not married. I am living with my girlfriend. And I asked him, where are you living? He said, I am living with my parent house. I am living with my parents, but also my girlfriend is. You see, Subhanallah, in our countries, uh, our parents will not allow to mix with others. But they, they are even allowing to stay in their own house. This is how they, their haya is, level, level of haya is very, very low. So it was not, uh, it is not uh, possible to teach me about haya. Already he became Muslim, but we can't jump and teach him about this. But after later on, we started teaching Quran uh, gradually, gradually, a few months. Then one brother who introduced him to us, this brother is a very elder brother, he told, uh, it's better you get married because uh, Muslims will not uh, respect you if you say, I'm living with your friend. Then he said, okay, I, I, am, I would like to have a nikah uh, ceremony. Then Alhamdulillah, I was uh, uh, doing his nikah ceremony. He became, uh, he uh, married with her and Alhamdulillah, he had a feast. Alhamdulillah, after a few months, we started. On the other hand, some people, they never teach about Haya at all. Uh, let about Haya. They don't even teach about Tahara to new Muslims. I know some brothers they, who embraced Islam 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. They don't even wash when they go to a uh, toilet. When they go and urinate, they don't wash. One man, it happened, this man is already Muslim for 13 or 15 years in a masjid in Japan. This man went to toilet and came back to office and he has no any cloth, even not underwear. He was covering with his both hands and I asked him, what happened to you? He said, my, uh, I kept my clothes inside this cabinet in the office. I told him, if you keep here this cloth, if somebody throws out this cloth, how would you go back to your home? <laughs> so don't remove your cloth in the office. Remove your cloth in the toilet. <laughs> then uh, gradually, you see, this man already 15 years or 13 years, he is Muslim. And he is married to a born Muslim from a Muslim country. Probably he is doing the same in the house. She is not teaching him. <laughs> We should not say to teach this long. We should teach them early on, gradually, with hikmah, with wisdom. Then we started teaching him gradually and about the tahara, how to wash after urinating. The same thing, you see, we should not, we should strike a balance. We should not jump into a new Muslim and teach, start uh, teaching every, everything now. We should strike a balance between extremism between living at all now. We should teach them gradually with hikmah, with wisdom. And uh, on more incidents about social media and uh, mixing people, one man, he also called me and he cried. He said he is married to a, a Japanese and she is causing a lot of trouble now. He is already married for a long time, many years possibly many years. Now she has all this uh, boyfriend and ch chatting and all these things. And uh, when he says, uh, even the clothing is not according to Islamic clothing. When she goes, different clothes. And she is not uh, listening to him at all. I asked him, when did he marry? Why did he marry her first, first of all? If you know, she is with many boyfriends and also she is clothing differently. Then he said, I was not practicing Muslim. Just a few years ago, I became good Muslim practicing. But before, I was not practicing Muslim. Then I got married her. Even I married her without converting her. After I embraced Islam, uh, after I became good Muslim, I taught about Islam. Then she became Muslim. Then everything went wrong. I told him, Allah, fear Allah, you, first of all, you do, did not have a good intention. You did not have a good intention. If you had good, good intention, you would have taught her Islam first. 
where the dawa where have to accept islam complete islamic life then you 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 could have married her before you are even seeing why you jump to mary and then you caused all this now you have to bear you have to carry this burden subhanallah because of the intention you see he just want to have visa or some other reasons he married and he caused all this trouble she is not listening she is coming with someone else and there is no on the other hand other men this story even i uh, narrated to zakir naik when i was in irf i went to meet uh, zakir naik few years ago uh, abdullah sharwani the secretary of zakir naik and other people in the office in irf bombay i uh, narrated them the story beautiful story on the other hand there are good stories why this man one man i met him fear say no subhanallah <laughs> he was coming with his wife fully uh, with hijab proper hijab and even niqab with gloves and socks i thought maybe in the first day, maybe she is from indian continent subcontinent maybe from india or maybe from arabia I asked him, where, where is she from? She, he said, no, she is from, uh, she is Japanese. And I asked him, did you force her to do, wear all this niqab and gloves and socks? He said, no, wallahi, I never forced her. She wanted to wear her herself. She started wearing and she never uh, leaving this. And I, I even told her, it's not proper in Japan to wear gloves, but she is wearing it. <laughs> What I can do? Okay, if he is doing one to leave, okay, you leave it. subhanallah this how she become a very good muslima because the intention of this brother when he started giving dawa to become muslim after becoming muslim he married her but he said even the mother of this his wife she was objected she never wanted to marry her daughter to him but she wanted to marry a muslim so she married without concession from her mother after few years her mother he she is out of touch with the daughter she just want to see how she is living she came to visit his house and she saw all the activities then the daughter she asked him to talk about janna and na help her then he the both the husband and wife were talking to the, to the mother about her life and her jannah she started to weep she started crying heavily crying then she said take me to masjid and i want to make shahada then immediately they took to masjid and she said shahada she became muslim and then after few days she went back to her home when she went back to her home she told her younger sister go and visit your elder daughter and see just see she came younger uh, sister of his wife she came to his house and she was seeing the other activities then again his wife told let us talk to her my sister about janna and na they both talked she started crying then she also said shahada same as she, she entered islam and then she married to his brother alhamdulillah subhanallah see his intention was very good and he made dawa and they become muslim because of her two others become muslim right she recently she passed away may allah have mercy on her that uh, wife of that brother who entered islam first she recently passed away may allah have mercy on her allah irham her so Uh, you see we can't uh, blame everyone there are some good good people there are bad people so we have to strike balance in everything we should not jump into talk about haya and for new muslims however for older muslims we have to talk yes we have to teach gradually on the other hand about this uh, uh, about uh, haya hishma um, about online these things we cannot tell to new muslims when someone comes to make shahada give shahada 
to become Muslim. We cannot say, I saw someone a few weeks ago, he is talking about, you see, subhanAllah, they already have children, one child, out of good luck. Then he is talking to him, her, you make shahada, tonight you don't stay with him. Tomorrow after nikah you can stay with him. How can she accept? You can say, yes, you, can, you can't spend with him, you stay alone, something like that. But he was forcing, if some people forcing like this way, people would run away from Islam. It will scare them. First thing we have to teach about Islam, about Iman. When their heart is attached to Quran, Sunnah, when their heart is attached to Allah and Jannah and Naar, then we can go on to teach about other things, about Haya, about other qualities, about Tahara, about Salah. Yes, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi when he sent Mahad bin Jabbar Radilan as governor to Yemen, he said, Uduhu. He said, uh, Mahad bin Jabbar Radilan, he said to Mahad bin Jabbar Radilan, call them towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If they accept Iman in Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then teach them about Salah. If they accept about Salah, then teach them other things like Siyam, one by one. First, we have to teach Iman. When Iman grows stronger, then the other things. This is how we have to deal with new Muslims and non-Muslims also. We should not jump into teach uh, these things, uh, the great qualities of Islam in the beginning. Uh, now Allah give us the faith. You know, few minutes you can uh, have some, if you have any questions and answers or doubts, we can clarify the doubts. Then we will pray, Isha, Isha, Allah, 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 Allah. Any questions? Any doubts? Clarification? Anything? Few times back, somebody, I think, Abraham, uh, Brother Abraham has shared one thing about uh, in the Akhirat when Hafiz comes or the Alim comes and mm. he will be told that mm. you have done this for somebody else. Somebody else. And, so and go and so, take, take yeah, reward from take. him. Mm. But for personal point of view, I say, and there is some amount of that things come. For example, uh, if I go pray, if I tell my child, if I tell my wife, I'm going for prayer. So some amount of that comes in the heart. How to avoid that? You see, Subhanallah, uh, Jazakallah khair. The hadith is very clearly states, uh, three people will be brought. One of them is Quran. Yes. The one, other one is uh, the one who is to give a lot of charity. Yes. And all these people, uh, these three kind of uh, group, it's not only three people they would be thrown into hellfire. One, one, is, one of them is Shaheed. Mm. He was martyred. But Allah SWT will say, you were doing this for people. So people might say, he was a powerful warrior and he became martyr for Allah. You, you were doing this for, to impress the people. Mm. You were uh, giving charity to impress people. So you were impressing, uh, you were doing, uh, memorizing Quran, so people might say, ah, how beautiful Kali is, he is, to impress people. So go and get the reward from the people. And Allah SWT will throw into the This is the important pillar of uh, Amal, our deeds, if we, our deeds should be accepted by Allah SWT, there are three points. One is ikhlas, sincerely it should be for Allah SWT. Second, it should be according to the manhaj and nubuwa, according to the guidance of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, if you pray Salat, you cannot start from uh, Sujood. You have to first make Qiyam and Takbir. If someone starts from Sujood or from Ruku, this prayer is not accepted. Right? We cannot go other way. Everything we have to obey according to the Sharia guidance of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If anything is not guided by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should never take as worship. For example, people dancing and they are claiming this is a thicker. This is never guided by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever not guided by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is rejected. The third thing is taqwa. If anyone has, does not have taqwa, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will reject their deeds. Innama yitaqabbalu Allah minal muttaqin. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala really accepts from those who has taqwa. Those who has taqwa means those who guard against sins. 
those who guard themselves against sins has taqwa allah subhanahu wa this three someone does not have sincerity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if someone has uh, is doing something 99.99% for allah but small person fraction for to show off to someone still allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reject allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts everything pure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never accept anything impure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept only pure but as for you just you are telling to your child and wife i am going to salah it is not intentionally anything bad it is not not anything intentionally bad it is just informing them yeah. okay this is uh, intentionally something uh, thinking that you are going to pray for allah but same times if someone thinks in the heart uh, so my wife may think uh, uh, my husband is praying worshiping he is a very good uh, righteous person if something comes our child uh, let me child think my father is very righteous by us this is this is intentional okay this is mixing of intention but just you are informing your child and wife i am going to pray this is nothing to do with intention just you are informing it's good okay you are nothing to fear about this inshallah uh, we have to amend our intention some ulama even say even if you made wrong intention sometimes sometimes shaitan comes inside our heart and fires up bad intention something we start let us make that intention correct our intention we are doing for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even sometimes the bad intention comes let us correct that intention to be purely for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify our deeds so always we have to check our intention and we have to purify our intention by amending our intention again and again that is the answer anything else anything uh yeah. just one thing is like uh, i need to pray but i don't have any place to pray mm. maybe a non muslim give me a place to pray and he help me uh, protect from the sun something like that he just yeah. hold a an umbrella umbrella is is our worship uh, become half uh, uh, no 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 inshallah inshallah <laughs> it is not he get any 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 good for for the if he no. any, any, muslim, any good any one good you see lot of people are doing good mm. but if they do not have iman if they do not have good intention it is, if it is not for purely for allah subhanahu wa taala first thing iman if there is no iman all good things are wasted many people billions of dollars some people are spending for uh, zakat charity sadaka right kuffar they are spending for charity but their deeds are wasted because they don't have iman they are doing it for just to for publicity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say go and take the reward iman is important so you were did you were uh, salah even though uh, you are doing you doing uh, if he uh, just to put umbrella over you you are not wasting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not waste your deed your salah is valid and if he becomes muslim inshallah he will get reward for this if he becomes accepts islam he would get reward for what he did this good act and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not decrease from your deed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna allah la yadhlimu mithqala dharra allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verily allah will never do unjust never be unjust never never be he will do wrong even to the amount of an atom when the ko hasanata yudaifha if allah sees any good in you only allah will multiply in this world you see we do lot of good things people will not reward extra salary just the same allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply according to your ikhlas maybe 10 times not only 10 times 100 times billion times according to your ikhlas if sincerity is more allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply this good deed into billions and trillions times in the hasan thing you like if he sees very small good deed in you allah only will multiply allah will never do wrong apart from multiplying this good deed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never stops there in the mithqal habbat wallahi inna allah la ilaha mithqal dharra wa in the hasan thing you like allah will multiply even if he sees a good deed small deed 
Apart from this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with a great reward. That is generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is anything else? Okay, we pray, inshallah. Pray, inshallah. Great us, 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 great us,